Isaiah chapter 42, verses 14 to 21. The Lord is speaking here. He says, I have been silent for a long time. I have kept still. I have restrained myself. Like a woman giving birth, I will scream. I will gasp and pant. I will dry up mountains and hills. I will make all their gra grass wither. I will turn rivers into violence. I will dry up pools. I will lead the blind on a way they do not know. Along paths they do not know, I will direct them. Ahead of them I will turn darkness into light and rough places into level ground. These are the promises I will accomplish for them. I will not abandon them. They will be turned back and be completely disgraced, those who trust in an idol. Those who say to molten images, you are our gods. You deaf ones, listen. You blind ones, watch carefully so you can see. Who is so blind as my servant? Or so deaf as my messenger whom I sent? Who is so blind as my covenant partner and so blind as the servant of the Lord? You see many things. But you do not observe. He opens his ears, but he does not hear. Because of his righteousness, the Lord was pleased to make his law great and glorious. This is God's word. What would you do if I asked to put a blindfold around your eyes? And then lead you around the sanctuary here, take you out the door down the hallway, down the stairs, around the buildings, go outside for a while. Is that something you think would be fun? Or is that something that would make you feel very anxious, very afraid? It could be a fun game if we set it up right, but it could also be a kind of a nerve-wracking test of of how easily we trust people, whether or not we can rely on someone to, to be our eyes for us, how well we're able to move when we can't see our surroundings, can't see the path in front of us, and we have to depend on someone else, their hand, their voice, to guide us. Of course, there are people who go about their daily lives this way, right? With the assistance of a, a stick to help determine where they are and what's in front of them. Or, or a seeing eye dog. People with visual impairments have customized items available to help guide and direct them to help them go wherever they need to go. Maybe you know somebody who is legally blind. How's your vision? Visual impairment, of course, can bring lots of challenges to life. Many, many of you are used to seeing with the assistance of customized eyeglasses, right? Or, or contact lenses. Some of you may have had surgery to remove cataracts from your eyes. Some people suffer from macular degeneration or other eye diseases. I think it's important not to take our eyesight for granted. Being able to see clearly when we're driving around town, being able to see the signs and the cars in front of us and what's going on around us. Or when we go for a walk in the park, being able to, to see the beauty of nature around us, the trees and, and watch the birds and other animals. We don't want to take that for granted. Something to appreciate because there are no guarantees as we get older whether our eyesight is going to hold out. How long we're going to have it. How long we're going to be able to see clearly. <coughs> now through the prophet Isaiah, the Lord talks about providing assistance to those who are visually impaired. The Lord promises to direct those who are blind and take away the fear 
and the uncertainty from their past. Who are these people that he's talking about, these blind people? Um, we're not talking so much physically here, but spiritually blind. People who don't know the Lord, don't know what he's all about, don't understand his ways, don't recognize his, his blessings. People who, the Bible would say, are in darkness. And, and the road that they travel is a rough road. You might say they're... Their spiritual eyes are covered with the blindfold of unbelief, the blindfold of ignorance about God and about God's grace. The Lord promises that he's going to turn their darkness into light. They won't be blind anymore because God's going to open up their eyes. They will see the light. The path ahead of them won't be hidden. They will see their God and know and believe in his salvation. When it's dark, when you have your eyes covered with a blindfold and you try to walk on, on uneven ground, there's always that risk of falling and, and hurting yourself. And so you have to take every step very slowly, very deliberately, because you're afraid you're going to get hurt. You don't know if it's really safe. You don't know where the danger is. But the Lord promises here, that the rough places will become level, will become smooth and easy to travel. Now in the Gospel, at the start of the service today, we heard about how Jesus opened the eyes of a man who was born blind. Obviously that changed that man's life, didn't it? Once he was able to see, he was able to enjoy a more independent lifestyle. He didn't have to constantly rely on other people to guide him and direct him. To provide for him. He didn't have to probably beg anymore because he could take care of himself better. He didn't have to depend on his walking stick to guide him. He could see where he was going. No more walking in constant darkness. He could see whether the, the path ahead of him was a smooth path or a rough path. Those are obstacles in front of him. He could avoid them. He didn't have to worry about tripping over them because he could see where they were. Can you imagine? Can you imagine going from not being able to see anything to suddenly being able to see everything? All of life with its brilliant colors. But our compassionate Savior didn't turn his darkness into light only to give him a better quality of life. This, this healing miracle was done to give glory to God. And through Jesus' miracle, a man saw God reaching out to him in mercy. And he believed Jesus was the Son of God and his Savior. His Savior not only from blindness, but his Savior from sin as well. God's people have been waiting for the Lord to provide a Savior for centuries. All the promises of the Messiah in the Old Testament. And then suddenly, a few hundred years of silence. No new promises. Well, what's he waiting for? We need to be rescued. We need some relief here. It might have seemed like the Lord had restrained himself and, and kept quiet for centuries while the people of Israel waited for this eye opener or Messiah to come. But it's kind of that strange illustration from Isaiah 42. Like the woman waits until the time is right to give birth. The Lord waited until the time was right to send his son into this world. And the blind man literally received his sight through Jesus Christ, literally fulfilling this promise given through the prophet Isaiah. But even better, he was brought out of a life of fear and darkness and hopelessness, and he was given joy and hope, knowing he had a Savior. So in this way, it's not just this man born blind, who is the fulfillment of God's promises, but it's fulfilled in every spiritually blind person that the Lord guides out of unbelief. Where before people could only see darkness ahead of them, the Lord has opened their eyes to see clearly the lighted path to heaven through Jesus Christ. That's us, right? We are also those people who were blind, but by God's grace now we can see we might not be aware of the dramatic contrast so much in our lives between darkness and light. But 
simply because of the fact that we are descended from Adam and Eve, we inherit that completely corrupted nature. When we're conceived, we're sinful, we're in darkness. And the world in which we are born can offer us no good hope for the future. Instead, it reminds us again and again through disease, through disaster, that lives are fragile and lives are short and who knows what's next. But the Lord has chosen you by grace to be his child. He called you out of darkness. He took you, took you by the hand and he led you safely into his life. You don't need to be afraid of stumbling and falling because he promises he's not going to abandon you. He's never going to leave you on your own. This promise from God is is placed on people of all ages effective. The promise of God's love and forgiveness and his concern for those spiritually blind people. It's a promise of guidance and protection throughout this life. A promise centered on the light of the world, Jesus Christ, who opens the eyes of the blind so that they can see him, their Savior, who came into this world to bring peace. Peace between people and our God. Peace through his obedient life and his self-sacrifice on the cross. Now sadly, just like we hear in the Gospel of John, the Lord in Isaiah condemns some of his people who had been given so many blessings and so many privileges for his chosen people. The Lord made his law great and glorious. He, he gave them his law through Moses and said, you're my people. You're supposed to be different. From the world around you. You're supposed to honor me with your lives and follow my commandments. They were special. And they were supposed to be a blessing to the entire world. But many of them rejected God. Although they physically belonged to the nation that was supposed to be a light for the world, spiritually, many were blind. Now the prophet Isaiah preached to the people of Jerusalem about a hundred years before the Babylonians came and and destroyed their kingdom. So at the time of Isaiah already, their days were really numbered because their blindness had caused them to grow up in the darkness, away from the Lord, and they grabbed a hold of false gods instead. God had made a promise with them, a, a covenant. He promised that if they would obey him and follow his laws, he would shower incredible blessings on them, and they would be his people forever. And they agreed to that covenant when they entered the promised land. But then they broke their covenant with the Lord, and they lost their privileged status. God preserved a remnant of them to fulfill his promise of a Savior for the world. But because so many were unfaithful to God, so many of them were lost in the darkness. And here God calls them the blind and the deaf servant. But when we think about the unfaithfulness of some of God's people, we should never think of ourselves as being better than they are. Instead, we should learn and take warning. Just like we learn and take warning from the example of, of people who at one time were Christians, but have since abandoned their faith. You and I are so blessed. We're so privileged as God's people. God has forgiven all our sins. Through his Son, he has chosen us by his amazing grace to believe in him through the work of the Holy Spirit. It's because of him that our eyes are open and that we are walking in the light of God's love on level ground that goes all the way to heaven. So let's not become arrogant or, or confident in ourselves. Never, we never want to take, grant, take for granted the gifts of God or, or we too might become blind again. We need to take God's warning seriously and, and with humble and repentant hearts focus our enlightened eyes on the cross where we witness Jesus enduring the darkness of sin and of hell in order to bring us into the light. Only because he has done that for us can you and I have a bright future. Only because Jesus Christ endured the darkness of sin and hell for us can we confess with King David in Psalm 27, 
Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? So praise God. Praise God for taking away your blindness. And he's given you eyes to see him as your one and only Savior. Amen.